Those in favor of minimum wage often like to emphasize the human element of raising minimum wage so that your average lower class individual can earn enough in a day to support himself or herself and their family. Which is, which is obviously desirable. Many economists and studies show, however, that it is the poor and it is these disadvantaged members of society who are ultimately going to be hurt most by this change of law. What do you have to say about this? How do we try to remain humane and sensitive to real people and their real needs when creating macro policies like minimum wage rates? Uh, well, I would say that this is exactly the problem. Um, just like I outlined at the beginning, when government tries to do something, to outlaw something like drugs, alcohol, poverty, um, they create these programs, they create these bureaus, and bureaucracy is created to, in order to uh, tackle these, these issues. Well, as we've seen in many other programs and many other issues in economics and civil life, when government creates a program, makes bureaucracy, and tries to elimin eliminate a problem with a government decree, it's not the way that it usually goes. Usually we have unintended consequences. Um, what we should be focusing on is how do people in the market actually gain higher wages? Remember that most people in the market today um, their wage is set by the market and not by the law. Their wage is set by the skills that they have, by the experience that they've gathered, uh, not by the, some government official telling them you should earn this much. Um, so what I would say is more productivity and, and innovation equals higher wages. It equal, equals higher wages and standards of living. Today we have gone to the standard of living that we've gone to because of our productivity and our workers, not because of some law saying that they have to make that much. I just want to point out that the American workforce, especially even the lower skilled workforce, are more skilled, more productive than at any time in American history, and they're being paid uh, less of a, of a rate than they were uh, in 1968, if you take into inflation, or take inflation into account. So it's not that they're not skilled, it's not that they're not productive, it's that they're not being paid the rate that they should be paid. Now there is uh, an aspect that the market does determine price, but not all the time. We do have a minimum wage. So there is a, a law stating that you can, are worth at least this much money based on just anything. You're worth seven twenty five an hour. And that's even with, uh, you know, with inflation, they should be making at least nine thirty an hour, you know? And, and we're talking about a human aspect. People forget it is about humans. It is about Americans. It's about our, our fellow people who are struggling to get by. I mentioned earlier that my mom was a single mother uh, with two children uh, working at Jack in a Box. Uh, she, at, at that time in the 80s, she was making a lot less money than, and then, uh, than she is now. And if it wasn't for HUD housing, we would probably be on the streets. Um, and, and you know, something you said earlier, uh, the war of poverty, it went from 19% 19, 19 to, down to 15%. Uh, it, it's easy to trivialize 4%, but if we remember, if we look at the numbers, 4% uh, right now would be over 12 million people. And, and to those 12 million people, it was a huge benefit. It, it's something that helped them maybe even change their lives around. Uh, so w when we talk about the human aspect, I think it's actually one of the most important things that we, we don't forget is that we're trying to help out our fellow Americans and, and, and above all else, that should be our priority.